today I'm going to help you get the most fun out of your new e-bike. I'll explain how to set your bike up, how to use the support on the trail, offer some tips on battery care, what clothing you should be riding in, some basic maintenance, skills tips on the trail, basic trail etiquette, and generally how to live your best e-bike life. Tire pressure is something you should check before every ride. On an EMTB, a good starting point is about 22 psi front and 30 psi in the rear. Fast riding will require harder pressures and slower, lighter riding, you could go down a few psi from there. It's something you must check before every ride. Your cockpit should be laid out to optimize control and comfort. Feel free to trim the bars down to a width that suits your body and riding style. Remember, they are supplied wide so you can trim to fit. Don't tilt the brake levers too far down and remember to space them inwards a little as you'll only need one finger on the brakes. The gear shifter and assist buttons should be easily accessed but not in a position that you're accidentally hitting them. Give yourself some space here. Also, don't run more than 30 millimeters of spaces under the stem and try to keep your bar roll in a neutral position or slightly rearward. Saddle height is as per an analog bike. In other words, with a crank in the six o'clock position, there should be a slight bend in your knee. For maximum comfort and efficiency, run the saddle horizontally or with the nose pointed slightly down. Your suspension should be set to about 20 to 25% sag. To do that, turn the compression dials to the open position. Hop onto the bike with all your gear on, compress the suspension and let it rebound then check the sag setting. Add or remove air pressure until you get to around about that 20 to 25% sag setting. Then set your rebound at a speed that it keeps the wheels connected to the ground as best as possible for the terrain and speed you ride. Flat pedals improve confidence, but if you're coming from an analog bike, you might prefer to jump straight onto the cleats. There's no right or wrong here. On the Bosch system, there are five assist modes. And these assist modes all decouple as soon as you reach 32 kilometers an hour. In the off mode, you'll have no support, but all computer functions can still be accessed. In eco mode, you'll have low steady assist with maximum efficiency for the highest range. In tour mode, a higher base assist level with steady support will keep you going. In EMTB mode, you'll get a progressive support. So there's sensors within the system which vary the support level to suit the way you're riding and the terrain you're on. If in doubt on technical terrain, just go to EMTB. Turbo mode, this is the maximum assist level for the fastest ride. Now choosing which mode to use is as simple as deciding how hard you want to work. For easy e-bike rides, use the higher assist modes. For days when you want to have a tougher workout, use the lower support modes. For technical terrain, just go to the EMTB mode. For the maximum support to get up steep climbs or get somewhere fast, turbo is your guy. To be smooth on the trails and get the best out of your bike, you'll want to joggle between the modes regularly. That's why it's there. So as an example, if you see a steep incline, switch to an easier gear and to a high support mode, and that'll breeze you up it. If you roll onto flat meadows and need to conserve battery power, then toggle to a low support mode and keep the cadence high. Basically, you want to use the gears just like you would on a normal bike. Your e-bike is supplied with a charger. Just plug it into the wall socket and into your bike and it'll begin charging. A couple pointers for battery care. So when it comes to charging, think of your bike as a modern smartphone. You can operate it on partial or full charges and your first ride doesn't need to be either, by the way, although your bike shop will probably charge it fully for you. After riding, it's a good idea to give the battery about an hour before recharging. I'd recommend fully recharging it after every ride, that way you know it's good to go when you decide to ride again. In terms of charge time, a 625 watt hour battery will fully charge in just under five hours with the standard charger. Once the battery has fully recharged, disconnect the charger and close up the charge ports. The range per charge is a big variable. You can expect anything from a three hour to five hour ride time. 
naturally using less support increases the ride time per charge. The battery on the Bosch system removes easily which is convenient for charging and for when transporting your bike on bike racks. If you are putting the bike into storage for an extended period, say a few months, then it's best to store the battery at room temperature and somewhere between 30 to 60% of full charge. The gear essentials are a trail specific shoe which not only protects your feet but also grips the pedals well. It's this contact point that provides your stability so a good shoe is very important. Get yourself some shorts that have a lycra and chamois insert and remember don't use any underwear when wearing these. You'll need a loose fitting shirt in long or short sleeves. Full finger gloves for better control and protection and a good helmet that fits properly. Knee pads are also a great idea if you are venturing into technical terrain and wanting to challenge yourself. Then you'll want to carry a hydration pack which is a neat place to store tools, a flat repair kit, your phone, a little cash and some snacks. If you are new to riding then you want to do the first few rides on basic district roads so you can familiarize yourself with the gears, support levels, dropper post functions and so on. Before heading into single track, you want to be fully competent and familiar with all the controls. Shift gears before the climb starts and continue to shift gears to maintain a higher cadence as you proceed up the climb. On steep climbs, don't be scared to go up a support level and if it's really steep, lower your chest to the bars to keep your center of gravity lower and to stop the front wheel from lifting. A tip for tight corners, set up wide Drag the brakes gently as you continue pedaling and look through the turn. The most important thing to remember when riding technical descents is to slam the dropper, stand up, place about 90% of your weight onto the pedals and let your limbs flex to absorb the trail. It's absolutely crucial to disconnect from the saddle. Don't squeeze it between your legs. The brakes are pretty powerful so rather drag and feather them as opposed to the on-off approach. Take things slow in the beginning and then slowly add speed. As your speed increases, remember to look further ahead. Aim for easy high cadence pedaling. There is no wrong or right assist mode to ride in. What I'd recommend is using all of them as often as possible to make your riding experience smoother and more fun. If you see something technical, then you might need extra power, go to the MTB mode. A good MTB rider will use the gears a lot and shuffle between the assist modes as the terrain or rider energy levels change. On new trails, always stop to inspect obstacles rather than just blasting them. Set yourself small challenges and gradually add progression. Have fun and keep smiling. So now you're on the trails living your best e-bike life. Here's a few things you want to remember to help you make friends out there. Smile, wave and be nice to everyone. Offering assistance to anyone in trouble is very much part of living your best life. You'll be climbing at speeds that can be four times faster than other riders on analog bikes, so if you are approaching them, it's not cool just to blast straight by and scare them to death. Slow down a little, greet and wave, and then once you've passed them, feel free to get back into your climbing rhythm. If a trail is closed, it's closed for a reason. It's not a great idea to ride the wrong way on a single direction trail. Trail building and trail maintenance is costly, so finding ways to contribute to that is very cool. After you ride, a wipe down, bolt check and battery charge is a great idea. If the bike is pretty greasy and needs a water wash, then avoid spraying or running water directly onto any of the electrical areas, including the controls. A sponge with soapy water is fine. After washing, let the bike stand for a bit and then dry and lube the chain and stanchions. Right, that's it. Drop us a message if you have any more questions. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. We'll see you on the trails.